Hello Crankers, it's 8 o'clock in the morning and today we are going to Poland to see a beautiful exhibition of uh, Hardy Gerdis in the Ludowicz Museum. Let's go! So the first thing that I have to do is uh, I have to take a bus <laughs> five or six hours to go to Kraków and then... Whoa, look, I have to jump okay and then I have to take a train two hours and then somebody will pick me up somewhere <laughs> and we will get to the museum which I think it's in a beautiful uh, Polish castle they are bringing most of the goodies of the museums of Poland I think they will have 24 historical goodies or uh, like they say, Lida Korbova. So yes, they invited me to, to see the exhibition and to show it to everybody interested online. So, that's it. Hello people, so I got to Kraków, but unfortunately uh, my bus was delayed, so I lost my connection to the place. So now I have to wait one hour here and Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can actually get there. One eternity later. Okay, guys, we made it to the museum and here's the exhibition. Let's have a look together. I see many, many examples of folk hurdy gurdies uh, of the 19th century. Uh, and they have also an organized room, some crazy experiments that I'm going to show you. They also have a gurdy to try for all the people that come to see the, the exhibition. It, it was pretty packed. Now they are uh, upstairs uh, seeing the concert and I, I <laughs> took the advantage to go down to the exhibition again to, to show it to you. Uh, look, th this is the gurdy that uh, they allowed all the attendees to try. It's a diatonic and I guess anonymous. Looks pretty new to me. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's have a look around and, and then I can tell you which pieces I found m more interesting. It's in pretty bad condition, but it's kind of cool, I like it. And all of, the, all of these gurdies have this weird tailpiece sticking out. It's kind of fun. This one, it says it's uh, 19th century. Also diatonic. Eh? And uh, it's nice to notice the original strap there, which is kind of nice. This is one of my favorite ones. Also, uh, it's, it's from Ukraine, this one. Very ornamented, I, I like the ornamentations there and, and the wood and the shape. And if you see, we also have some details in uh, horn and the tailpiece with this very nice scroll. Look at how tiny the, the crank is. 1977 by Stanislav Mitzak. Diatonic uh, gurdy, very big, resembling a little bit the um, the Hungarian type, no, or the or the early German uh, types, and look also very very tiny crank. Another Ukrainian example with three strings, also from the 19th century. Uh, all of the exhibition is very based in the folk gurdies from the 19th century. So, diatonic tailpiece sticking out, very very tiny crank. I don't know how how would you play this with this very tiny crank? They you would need like a like a different technique, no? This cannot cannot be held like on the traditional French style. Polish example also from the 20th century or the 19th century. This piece is interesting. Look at those tiny pegs, and it has like a small box. I suppose to to carry the rosin or uh, carry the cotton. Look at that. And of course, again, this very characteristic. Uh, tail piece sticking out and very small knob. This is a huge one, also 18th century. Look at the, at the back of the keys, they are rounded. 
Also, again, tailpiece, very characteristic. Three strings. This is from the Ethnographic Museum of Krakow. I don't know if, you, if I told you, but they brought uh, 24 gurdis from all of the different museums in Poland for this project. More than Alira Kurbova looks like a crazy experiment, no? Almost like an HGSO. <laughs> 1965, example of an HGSO. This century. This uh, <laughs> is very weird also. Uh, it looks like a chicoten. Do you know what the chicoten is? It's like a chicoten but with, with keys. Another example of the 19th century. This one has a ball knob. It kind of reminds me like the early uh, examples of uh, Radoslav Malish, no? With the uh, catnips. Very nice. 1884. So I assume this one has a label. Uh, three strings and it has a face in the tailpiece. Kind of cool. <laughs> and look at the knob. It looks like it's mounted backwards or, or something. This one, uh, 19th century or, or 20th century, from the Museum of Poznan. I don't know if you see the ornamentation there. Kind of cool. Three strings. So if you come with me here, we can see the oldest uh, gurdi that they have in the exhibition. Uh, kind of mimicking the, the French Baroque style but with some differences. This is the, what it says. Sorry, I cannot pronounce in Polish. It's missing the, the crank. The bridge is a bit weird. <laughs> and somebody put uh, modern metal strings. The tet. This is a detail of the tet. Looks like an amateur build, no? But at least uh, this is an example of a, uh, this is an example of a 18th century building. This one, I assume it also has a label because it says it's uh, 1794, so classical period. It kind of reminds me to the Song uh, Gurdis, no? The Chinese ones. That's a nice scroll, I have to say. Kind of cool and the detail here on the pegs. I don't know if you see it or not. It has a metal detail. Kind of nice. Look at that, it's huge. Um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, this is a medieval instrument. This is the old, old, oldest form of the hurdy-gurdy, and it was played by two people. So one was playing the keys, and the other one was with the crank. Kind of nice, made in 2005. Reminds me to the iconography that we have in Santiago de Compostela. I will show you some pictures. Uh, you tell me what you think. But I think it's after that model. So here we have some uh, examples of modern gurdis. Uh, this is 2006. 1993. Very cool, this one. Also with the with the crazy tailpiece. This is very difficult not to transport, but very interesting examples. This also 18th century, looks like, definitely like a violin, but with a with the wheel. Kind of like the instrument that uh, uh, Wolfgang Weichselbaumer uh, did some years ago, the slidey word, you know. And behind, I guess a, a modern uh, copy. Exactly, yes, this is 2022. So the old one and the modern one. Some other examples of Lira Corbova, 19th century, 19th century again. Very small knobs. Look at this crank. It's brass <laughs> and very tiny. This is uh, the exhibition. Uh, I want to thank the museum for uh, letting me come. It was like 10 hours of uh, travel. But uh, I, I really enjoyed the, the exhibition. Um, most, of, most of it, it's uh, 19th century, 
I would like to see like all their examples of Gurdis, maybe next year, uh, like more original Baroque ones or, or even some Viela Colonne from, from the 17th century. It would be nice to see those examples. And I really hope I could read the Polish because all of the walls are full of detailed explanations of, of the instrument with amazing pictures. I didn't mention it, but um, none of these gurdis has, has a dog, or uh, I didn't see any buzzing system, no? such as the Hungarian tekeros or, or all of that. So it's kind of nice. And all of the examples on, on the pictures on the walls are like people using the gurdi for singing. <laughs> I feel a little bit bad because I, I went down in the middle of the concert. Uh, which was kind of okay, but... Oh, and here they have like a couple of paintings. Let's have a look. This one, I like it very much. This could be me in a couple of years, maybe in 20 years, I'm like this. With long beard, white, a gurdi, and a cane. Don't you think? So, this was the exhibition. I hope you, you liked it. Uh, it was definitely worth it to come here and spending more than 10 hours on a bus and trains. So, thanks to the museum for inviting me and keep on cranking, bye. So it's uh, 22, 22 at night and it's freaking snowing here in Poland. So now I start my journey back to the Czech Republic, back to Brno. I have to take three trains and two buses because remember, I don't drive, I have gorgeous.